Hello, so this is going to be a review of this German Parker I bought recently, and this is one from West Germany dating back to around the 70s or the 80s. I think this one is from 1980, judging from the label inside. Now, you can get reproduction ones of these I've seen as well, so as long as you know it's a reproduction of one buying it and you're not paying too much for it, I guess that's not too bad if the quality of them's good. But as far as I can tell, this is an original one. Um, so I got this from the Army Surplus, and it's... Um, I really like it. So... The main reason I got it was because I wanted something that was basically in World War II German splinter pattern to um, do a camo test on. Now getting actual World War II camouflage is often very expensive and it's very faded and some of the reproductions aren't you know, brilliant. So what I was doing is I was just in the surplus shop seeing what they had in and they had this in so I thought I'd get this regardless. Um, and this is quite close to World War II splinter but not identical so if I get a bit closer to the camera and just do that so you can see the pattern a bit better you've kind of got the green stripes or blotches whatever you want to call them you've got um, like these kind of red rust coloured brown um, sort of patches on it as well obviously as part of the um, disruptive effect then you've got your splinter pattern or your raindrops whatever you want to call them that are on parts of the material and not others and what I like about the splinter pattern on this camouflage is it's actually quite random in the sense, I don't know if you can see that, that not all of it is in directly straight lines. Some of it's a bit more diagonal than others. So I think that would work quite well. Obviously, that is a micro pattern, though. You're only really going to notice that pattern up close. So what I'll do is I'll show you the inside of the jacket. Um, obviously, the problem is filming inside. You can never get um, these things sort of fully sort of visible on the camera, people moan at me constantly, but there's just no way if you're inside you and you don't live in a hall or something, you can't actually film stuff like that. So it's got a removable liner inside, which is sort of like a fur um, fleece kind of thing, quite comfortable. So if you wanted this for summer use, that comes out. Very simple to detach, it's just got poppers in it. So basically, if I show you the hood, and the nice thing is the liner in this one actually goes into the hood with a lot of jackets, it stops at the neck area you uh, simply unpop it to take the liner out so that's nice and simple so you just do that all along the jacket if you want the liner out so I'll show you the label those of you that speak German can um, obviously read that but I'm assuming that is from the fifth month in 1981 so May 1981 as far as I can tell um, so as far as I can tell this is a genuine one because most of the stuff in the surplus store seems to be actual genuine equipment not free pros but I only paid £40 for it so that doesn't seem an excessive price if it is a reproduction or an original um, so yeah it's not faded at all as you can hopefully see the camo pattern is um, totally fine on it and you've got a couple of drawstrings as well you've got two drawstrings on the hood um, if I can get those visible there we go, one there, one on the other side, so you can obviously adjust the hood. These ones have actually been knotted at least, so they don't pull back through. I've had some coats before where the drawstrings aren't knotted, so you tie the coat once and then, um, oops, your drawstring's gone. Another one at the bottom there, this one's actually a different design, it's one where it's looped <coughs> back round like that. And then on the uh, same side there, there's another one. Again, if you wanted to, you could probably tie an additional knot in any of those if you wanted them just to be a bit more secure. So, this has both a zip and buttons to do up, so I'll fully do it up. The only thing I will say about it, um, which, you know, is more of a negative thing, but it's worth mentioning in a review of it, of course, is that you don't have total arm movement as you'd expect when you've got this on. Uh, basically, if you're going to do that with your arms, move them in. Um, the thickness of the jacket kind of restricts movement like that. In most angles your arms will be fine, but moving them in uh, you get a bit of restriction here. Obviously where all the padding in the coat brushes against other padding in the coat. Now I find found if you wear this with just a vest on underneath or a shirt or a shirt and a thin jumper you should be fine. If you're wearing a big fleecy top like I normally wear under these that's then a bit uncomfortably tight. So um, you know, just be aware that you can't put this on with loads and loads and loads of layers and just to mention which should be obvious but some people complain if I don't mention this if you were to buy a much more modern thermal coat for £40 you probably could get something a lot better but I like the style of things like this but you know technology has come a long way over the last few decades 
so you can get the polyester kind of filled things now which are really really warm and snug um, which would be better in more extreme temperatures than this however you know you don't get a coolish German World War II style pattern on it so I will zip this up now I can't remember the exact name of this camo pattern because as I said it's not splinter tan technically um, but it is splinter tan so what I'll do is as you can see on here that's about frames so there you go there's buttons on the front so I'll just button that up now um, the buttons go further down than the actual zip goes so the zip kind of just does the main torso area of the jacket and then the buttons kind of you know cover more of it um, but this was used by the West German border guards because up until about the 70s or the 80s the West German border guards actually had proper camo and everything and then for whatever stupid reason the German government decided that they shouldn't actually have military style uniforms on because it looks aggressive or something from what I've read um, you know when you're demilitarizing your military because it looks aggressive you're doing something horribly wrong you need your military to be an effective fighting force so they had their camouflage removed and were given like bright green sort of jumpsuits to wear which looked really stupid the East German border guards at the time carried on wearing their strict tarn um, if you're not familiar with strict tarn imagine a yellow bit of this uniform it's like a yellowy green with these sort of lines on it quite similar it has no disruptive kind of pattern on strict arm, but it is a really nice camo. So, you've got two breast pockets that are decently deep. A modern mobile phone won't go quite to the bottom of it, I'm afraid, but it will go decently far in. So you can put your mobile in there and it won't fall out. However, what you have got is two very deep, um, let me show you there, sort of pockets at the bottom. And these don't do up. Oh, well, they might do up, actually. Let's see. Um... Oh, I tell a lie, they do do up, so that's me being stupid. Um, you've got the overhanging flap, but then there's actually a button there, so you can do them up. But those are the great kind of pockets I like not done up, so you can actually put your hands in them when it's cold, and you've got your hands in the pockets, you know, on your front. Um, but yeah, they're deep enough that if you get um, a regular kind of flashlight or your wallet or anything, you could put them in there. Personally, I prefer button up or zip up trouser pockets for um, valuables, but... You know, you can do it with this coat. So, as I said, there is a hood. So, that's the hood on. Um, there's another button up on the neck, which I won't do up, because I find those really restricted when you have them done up like that. But, um, <clears throat> as I said, with the pull strings, if I can find the other one, there we go. You can pull those up, and you could have um, this on. So, there you go. You've got your um, jacket on there. Like I said, comfortable does a good job of actually being a camouflage jacket in my opinion because it's got a disruptive pattern on you know as well as the little splinter streaks um, and it's pretty good in cold weather the coldest I've worn this out to at the moment has been about 8 degrees celsius something like that so not cold cold and I think minus yet and in those temperatures walking with it on you know I was quite warm despite the wind and everything else so um, yeah these jackets do seem to work well I'm afraid I haven't tested to see if it's rainproof or waterproof um, so there's always that, I don't actually know, so he might be able to tell you. But as I said, if you, for your money, wanted something that was really, really modern and effective, you wouldn't go with one of these. But if you want something cool and a bit retro, then you would go with one of these. That's the kind of thing of a lot of military surplus that, unless you're going for the latest design stuff, um, you know, there's always something better you can get. And as I said, winter coats have come a long way in terms of having like those kind of filled sections, you know, like the plasticky stuff. Or I guess they put some sort of microfibers in, and then, you know, the thing's sealed up with them inside. Um, I think even Primark do very basic coats like that, for, you know, probably like 10 or 15 pounds, just to give you an idea. But um, if you want something that's Millsurp and cool, um, you know, there's this. So, yeah, pretty effective. When the weather gets colder, I'll be wearing it probably a bit more. Um, but I just thought, you know, and I will do a camo test of it at some point. But, yeah, um, I'm pretty pleased with this, um, it's a really nice jacket and the like, main thing is I just find the camo pattern on it quite cool and interesting, so there we are.